it's your favorite black ass cousin and i'm back for another episode of your favorite podcast from your favorite cousin <laughs> but yes y'all we are back for another episode of freedom this is the official conscious kingdom podcast and as always i'm super excited because we have another dope cousin that is joining us today so y'all know around here we are all family so we don't say <laughs> yes, we don't say hosts, we don't say followers or none of that. We are family, we are cousins. So I am super excited for this um, interview today because I know she's going to drop nothing but gems. One thing my father used to always say is it doesn't really matter um, what you do in this life. It's more about what you give back. It's about taking the things that you've experienced in life and using those lessons to help and uplift others. And this amazing woman that we have here today with us, I just wanna read this quote because it definitely resonated with me. This is straight from her website. It says, I hope my story will resonate, inspire, uplift, and give readers hope. I testify as a witness for myself and for others that it is possible to overcome seemingly insurmountable circumstances and to forge and possess a future which represents the best of who you are. If that's not Black revolutionary work right there, I don't know what is. I am so excited to introduce y'all to Miss Tasha Hunter, a licensed clinical social worker. How you doing, cousin? Hey, cuz. Hey, cuz. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. Yes, we are so honored to have you. So I just want you to kind of give a brief, um, kind of quick little uh, synopsis or summary of who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah, so as you said, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I currently live in North Carolina where I have my private practice. I'm also an Air Force veteran. Yes, thank you so much for your support. Thank and you. Your, yes, for your service. <laughs> I'm an Army girl myself, but you know. Okay. <laughs> that's women in uniform. I Listen, that's I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so so that's it. I, I've got my private practice and that's what I do. I love it. I love yeah. it. And um, trust me, y'all, Tasha is being very modest right now. She is also an author of her memoir, her amazing memoir, What Children Remember. It is available on Amazon. So I know y'all on there right now shopping for stuff that you don't need. Make sure that you add this to your cart as well. I know y'all got Prime. I mean, look <laughs> at that beautiful cover. Yes. Yes. So we're just going to dive right in. So tell yeah. me what, in, for, for one, I'm always in awe of um, mm -hmm. Black professionals, for one, who go into mm -hmm. the field of um, social work. I have a, uh, a mentee, and she literally calls me mom, but my, my little baby, she also pursues, mm -hmm. um, she's a licensed clinical social worker as well. And I know mm -hmm. that it's not an easy task. I know it's a lot of schooling, no. it's a lot of clinical work, it's it. a lot. So um, just initially, yeah. what started you on that journey? What inspired you to pursue that? Uh, I was in therapy. So I was going to therapy. And after I got out of the military, and I was a person that was a fixer, a helper, a caretaker, a rescuer for everybody else. And my therapist during one of my sessions, and a lot of other people had said, Tasha, I can tell you anything. You're like my therapist. And I kept hearing that over and over. And then my therapist said, girl, you do my job, but you do it for free. You need boundaries. Ooh. And <laughs> yes, you need to stop <laughs> just trying to fix people. You need to stop rescuing people. Mm. Um, and I went to school. I wanted to learn more about that. I'm like, okay, how did she arrive at that? And also everybody kept saying, I don't know, it's just something about you. It's like you got something on your forehead. Like I can tell you anything. And I was yeah. I was everybody's secret keeper. Mm. I was every if you're in a bond, call me. Right. And so <laughs> so I, I went to school to to learn more about that. And I thought, well, maybe that's what God has been trying to tell me. But I gotta work on me first. So school was one to help myself. And then if I can help myself, let me bring some other people with me. Wow. That is amazing because 
for one, I think there is such a stigma behind um, Black folks and their mental health and, you know, yeah. they're, they're white, white people go to therapy. We don't do all that, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. um, th- we do, just like you said, we have that strong friend, that friend that we can confide in yeah. and, and you just become, you know, their, their secret collector and, they, and the person yeah. that they went to. Um, so I love that you took that and that inspired you to, to lead this life that you have. Um, true, truly, truly revolutionary work because for one, we need more representation in that field as it is. Um, I, do. Stand, I stand those websites like uh, Therapy for Black Girls and um, mm-hmm. Black Therapists, uh, you know, all the social accounts mm-hmm. that are dedicated to Black mental health. Um, what mm-hmm. has the journey been like for you since you now are a licensed professional? Um, how has that been? <laughs> I... I love my job. Like every day I get up ready I know that's to right. do this work. 98% of my clientele, it's it's black people. Wow. It's family. Yeah. And so, and I specialize in treating adults, helpers, caretakers, professionals with a history of childhood trauma. Okay. I was a child or I'm an adult with the history of childhood trauma. So just like I set out to do, I'm bringing, I'm help, you know, I got help. Let me bring some other people with me. We're all going to get help. We're all going to get free. It's the best job I've ever had. I love it. I love it. Um, just that spirit of Sankofa. I'm going to bring everyone up with me. I love that. Yes. Um, and, and one thing that I definitely found very interesting um, in doing my research on you and the work that you do, you specialize specifically in the treatment of PTSD. So as mm-hmm. a li- licensed professional, I definitely um, want to get your take on, um, well, first, just, you know, for the listeners who are unaware, kind of explain what it mm-hmm. is and what that treatment looks like. Because for one, I think a lot of it is, un- like that trauma often is unidentified in the Black mm-hmm. community. And it's kind of, um, <laughs> that energy is kind of pushed into other negative things often <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. don't always mm-hmm. manifest into positive things for people's lives. So um, can you just kind of give a breakdown of, of what that all means and what that treatment does actually look like? So most often the things that I see are adults who grew up and they've experienced physical abuse, sexual abuse, parental, either the physical abandonment by an adult, a parental figure, Mm -hmm. uh, a a mother or a father that was not there for whatever reason. Um, A lot of the adults that I work with have been sexually abused by siblings, uncles, aunts, Mm -hmm. you name it, family, friends. And, And then there's also the generational stuff that we deal with. And so how much of that is was just put on you? So so poverty and, and addiction yeah. and yeah. kind of how we cope with things. Um, overeating, gambling, drinking, drugs, all yeah. of that stuff yeah. that this is how we deal with things in our family. And it's caused the PTSD. So... Um, yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I do, well, not just one of the things, cause it's kind of, I don't want to oversimplify it, but helping us to, to kind of name our experiences. We're not used to doing that because in our families, we're taught what goes on in this house stays in this house. Mm, very true. And then oftentimes we grow up in families where we don't even believe that, that we were brought up in dysfunction. Yeah, it's so, just, it's so normalized. It's like, oh, no, yeah, they, just, they just try to kill each other every weekend, girl. That ain't nothing. That's it. Like, yeah. Wait a minute. Violence. <laughs> right. That this is just how we are. And, and sometimes we, we, we're kind of like, well, every, other people had it worse. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I had food, clothing, shelter. Well, Suge, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. Even animals get that to a certain degree. Very true. So, so, so helping them to name whatever they identify as, as, as trauma, you know, and, and not everything that people go through, you know, it, it, it's up to the person to kind of 
say, well, yeah, that was traumatic for me. Um, and then we work through some of that generational stuff. Like I said, the, the, the poverty, some of the abandonment, some of the addiction, some of the ways in which our families talk to us in such harmful ways. Yeah. And, and we take on that belief of whatever negative and, or ugly thing that they said about us. And so my treatment is handling all of the emotions and the behaviors that stem from that, if that, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I completely answered the question, but. No, ab absolutely. Um, I love that you mentioned the generational issues because one thing that I love about your approach is that it is more of a spiritual, mental, it doesn't just feel like, you know, I'm because so oftentimes I think therapy is, I think people think of therapy as that depiction we see on TV. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're sitting there with some like stiff white doctor in a, in a, in a tie and you're laying yeah. on the couch and it's like, well, how did that make you feel? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think yeah. so many people have this kind of linear idea of what therapy looks like. And I love that mm -hmm. you kind of incorporate all of those different things because mm -hmm. the black experience is so unique. You can't yeah. just kind of give a blanket to it. You do have to kind of go through all of the layers. So I love that all of that is being addressed because you do have to get to, to the root of, of things for people. And mm -hmm. I can absolutely see, you know, you have such a calm yeah. and welcoming demeanor. Like I want to tell you my life right now. And, <laughs> and we just do this podcast. It's like, yeah. I want to be yeah. like, well, when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely can see um, why you are so amazing at what you do. Yeah. And what you do has led you to now mm -hmm. also become an author, which is so yeah. exciting. So what sparked that for you? Like, cause, cause one for one, yeah. writing a book is a very tall task. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, what yeah. inspired you to do the memoir and, and how did that come about? So I thought about when I wrote my book, I literally just wrote it because I wanted to get free. There were all these things that had happened to me that caused me to suffer with PTSD, mm -hmm. caused me to attempt to kill myself and all of the, it, it was just such damaging behavior. And I lived with that shame. Yeah. We, we can't really talk about things like that, right? There's, there's, there's not a way to, to just have these open conversations and to really be real about this is the way in which my upbringing impacted me. And I had terrible relationship habits. As I said, I was a fixer, the rescuer for everybody. Then I didn't trust. And then sometimes I trusted too much. And it was, I was all over the place <laughs> yeah. with my issues. But I, kept, I held a lot of shame and secrecy and so I said, before I die, I'm getting all of this out of me because there's women all over this world, just like me, who are dealing with that same secrecy and that same shame. And I wanted them to know you're not alone, okay? And, if, and, and I'm living proof that you can, you can get through it, that you can go through these really horrible experiences, these really horrific experiences and still have joy. Absolutely. Still have a future and live your purpose. And so it's for every woman out there that's that's like, if anybody ever knew this about me, they'd never love me or or they wouldn't approve of me. I love that. Was that was that difficult for you to be so um transparent and and open about, yeah. about those things? Of course. Oh my goodness. It took me four years to write my book. It would go to an editor. The editor would say, okay, we need more information. We need you to go in depth. <laughs> you're like, so, oh, you to paint a picture. <laughs> right. so then I take six months off or I take nine months off. And I was like, but I was in therapy the whole time, thankfully. But you know, I had to go through this process. So it took four years. And I did worry because there were a lot of people that didn't know that I had attempted suicide. There were a lot of people that, that didn't know that I was sexually abused. And then, and then that caused me to be hypersexual. That caused me to question my sexuality and go through that journey of exploration. Mm -hmm. I talked about mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And so I thought about people that I had went to church with and people that, 
what are they gonna say? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, people in my family, what are they gonna think about me? But I own my story and I'm free and I'm good with it. And so, yeah, it was it was hard at first. I was very afraid of what people would say about me. Yeah, I mean, because like you said, that's revealing parts of yourself that you haven't necessarily done. So yeah. I commend you just for that, that courage alone, yeah. because I can tell you right now, it's absolutely going to help someone. I know that it is because I think that's one of the hardest parts of, of the trauma that we go through. We, we feel so alone in the midst of it. Yes. And we feel like, that you know, this is me. Why me? You know, it's just me. Yeah. When, Oftentimes, um, you know, therapy helps you realize it, it's 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 deeper than that. So I definitely yeah. thank you for for sharing that. And Lord knows the church folks can get quite judgmental. <laughs> so <laughs> I completely understand. Like, oh Lord, I'm look, I'm gonna be on the bulletin, Chad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they gonna yeah. be talking about my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely call me to the altar, <laughs> right? <laughs> I definitely yeah. get that, but I, I do, like I said, I commend you for that transparency yeah. um, and for you just through your journey. Um, yeah. I think that there definitely is a shift that's happening where we are starting to talk more about mental health, specifically in the Black mm -hmm. community, but for you specifically mm -hmm. working in this field now being a published mm -hmm. author, what is the importance of uh, mental health in the Black community to you? Oh, it's, it's number one because... One, we're, we're not, can I just speak about Black women? It, this applies to Black men as well. Mm -hmm. But Black women, we are the most ignored, the most discounted. We are not ever provided the, the right, the ability to be weak, to be soft, to be vulnerable, to not have the answers. Think about the roles of Black women even today like, for instance, a Stacey Abrams, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She got to do all the work. All Come of on. It. All, all and, of it. <laughs> and that's how we functioned since slavery days. Since, I mean, since just being used, you know, for other people's benefit mm -hmm. and not allowed to say, I can't do this. And I mean, and so for me now, it's, it's working with other Black women and Black men and them having an avenue, a safe place to say, I don't have all the, an the answers. I'm hurting. This thing that happened 20 years ago impacted me. It's impacted my relationship with my body, my relationships with other people, how I show up at work, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they're getting free. That's it. So that, that's my whole goal is, is to help them get free and to provide that safe place that another clinician of a different color may not provide services the way I do. They may not can do what I do because I identify with their struggle. Absolutely. That, that in itself, um, just even with my own personal, cause I, I'm a proud advocate. I will, I mentioned my therapist, like she, my home girl, <laughs> and like, cause, cause my whole goal is I want to make it so, um, I want to normalize it so much that the same way yeah. I can, you know, we can talk about whatever headline came out for the day or what the last episode of real housewives, I want to be able to be like, yeah. Cause when I was in therapy, we can't, we talked like I, want to normalize yes. those kind of conversations because for me there's so much power in it and I do have a black mm -hmm. woman therapist shout out to mm -hmm. Dr. Yvonne okay like <laughs> love her that's my girl <laughs> but you yes. know it's like I think we just need to have mm -hmm. those moments yeah. um where it is normalized and there isn't this like backdoor you know hide yeah. like you know you know I ain't right I gotta go talk to somebody like we we do yeah. need to get beyond that um because I think that it opened the door, it opens the door for more black people, specifically black women, to feel they can yeah. be vulnerable and, and get the help. We don't have to wait until we're literally on the precipice of a breakdown to yeah. feel like I need to go speak to somebody. Like, don't wait until you get to the point of mental exhaustion, sis. This mm -hmm. is your favorite cousin telling you right now with a licensed professional. Y'all, she a professional. Yeah. <laughs> She's telling us this is what we need. 
feet. Um, yeah. And it's such a benefit in, in, in sitting across from someone who looks like you, because if I'm saying, you know, hey, I'm experiencing this stuff at work, I don't have to then give yeah. an, an explanation on what that means, which I've had to do with white therapists, I'll be honest. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm having to explain what a microaggression is to a white therapist. Right. That's oh, not a good, work. yeah. <laughs> like that's that's not a good feeling when I'm, I'm already feeling stressed out. Now I have to explain to you and then deal with white guilt and it was yeah. too much. I'm telling you, a black yeah. therapist as a black woman is is critical. It's very yeah. critical. But I do have to ask because mm. beyond your title, you are a black woman mm -hmm. yourself. You have your own yeah. hurdles, obstacles, feelings, mm -hmm. emotions. Um, as mm -hmm. a professional, how do you find that balance of kind of self love and and saving yourself while saving mm -hmm. us? <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, that is such a great question because number one, I'm a therapist with a therapist. I love it. So, <laughs> so I have my own safe place where I can go and talk about all the things uh, that I, so on a different day of the week, at a different time, I'm getting my own help and dealing with my own life issues. Mm -hmm. And that journey of self-love, that's going to be lifelong. It just is. And so, but it was through therapy that I even understood what it meant to love myself. And, and if I love myself, then I'm not people pleasing. If I love myself, then I'm, then I'm saying no. And I'm, and I'm having boundaries with, you know, with people. Uh, if I love myself, then, then I'm not working myself crazy and putting other people before me, I'm taking care of my needs emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in all the ways. Yeah. So I'm advocating for myself. I'm speaking up. Um, I didn't know what that, that meant because for a long time, I didn't have examples of what it even meant to be loved. I wasn't loved well in my life. And so I didn't know how, how do I love myself? Nobody else has loved me. So it's, it's been a journey and, and it's been beautiful being on the other side of healing and learning that. I think that's so important too, because I think that it often feels like <laughs> in this society now, anyway, everything is yeah. like a quick fix. It's like, oh, I'm having yeah. a bad day. Oh, you should just, you should just meditate and light a candle. Oh, you should just go for yeah. a walk. You'll be fine. Like everything is so like a yeah. quick turnaround, but I love the transparency mm -hmm. And even from someone yeah. who is a licensed professional, letting it be known that, hey, it's a journey. You yeah. can't go to one or two therapy sessions and then be like, I'm healed. I am good. Right. Like, no, uh. <laughs> you might got to yeah. put that work in. Um, has that been difficult from your, you know, from your professional side of the table? Um, is it difficult to get your Black patients to... Um, open up and kind of do the work as Ayanla says to do the work <laughs> not my people yeah uh, not my, people. <laughs> my clients are the best the, the ones that that find me they come ready they come ready and and so when they come it's like this is what I've been dealing with mm -hmm. and some of them have been dealing with things for 20 again 20 and 30 years yeah they were first hurt at the age of five, at the age of eight, at the age of 10, and they're getting help. And they're like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the anxiety. I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of, of coping with, with my emotions, with food. I, I need help. Yeah. And so yeah. they do the work. I literally only work with people, no kidding, that are willing to do the work because I don't want us to waste each other's time. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I think, yeah, I definitely got to be willing to do the work. I think, see, I feel bad because now I feel like I'm a bad client because he does have to kind of pull me a little bit like, okay, that that's, we talked about that. And I'd be like, but girl, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, but, hard, but but it's, it's so worth it. But you're in therapy and, and so doing the work, that's also a journey. Yeah. And so you know, your emotions, our emotions, 
they, they kind of show up in different ways and it takes time for our, what, what I call, I practice internal family systems therapy. It takes time for our parts that are angry, that are depressed, that are, that are procrastinators or overworkers or however we, we, we protect ourselves to even trust that we can handle things. So, so you are just the fact that, that you're going to therapy, that's part of the work. Yeah. And yeah. over the course of your lifetime, you're going to change. You're going to evolve. We all are, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, I could, I could talk about that for hours. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. But y'all can already see she's dropping gems. Just, I mean, they're yeah. flowing so freely, but I definitely want to focus more on the memoir because we are super yeah. excited about it. Yes. Um, overall, what would you, what would you say is, the main thing that your readers will get from the memoir? What children remember? What's the main thing that they will grasp from the, from the book? So when I think about my book, I told each story, each part of my journey with really raw honesty. So you're going to get a full picture of what I experienced, how it impacted me, um, in terms of the relationship I had with myself, my body, how it impacted my relationships platonically, romantically, and my faith journey, my relationship with God. And so you get the full picture and how I got from there to here. I'm not going to give you this, uh, I think you called it like a, a cookie cutter version, this everything's great now. I'm perfect. I'm all fixed you get the real deal because I don't know how to bring it any other way. So, so when I say that healing is a journey, that's what I mean. And, but you're going to get how I got there. And sometimes we don't realize the ways in which trauma surfaces in every facet of our lives, how we show up small at work, how we feel unworthy, you know, to ask for what we need or to voice our concerns. What does that look like? You know? And so, yeah, they, they get all of that. Listen, if y'all are not sold yet, <laughs> I don't know what else you need, but you need this book, What Children <laughs> Remember. Think about your own traumas and just what you as an adult still um, have to fight through from your childhood. Think about your own traumas and, and think about the power in reading something that speaks to that and how it can help you. I think that there is so much information out there in this world today get something that's going to benefit you it's yeah. on it's on amazon you can shop yeah. you can definitely grab that already barnes and noble anywhere mm -hmm. you get your books please make sure you are supporting this yeah. beautiful soul right here that's <laughs> out here doing this revolutionary work and that is helping us to get our mental yeah. health together it is 2021 mm -hmm. y'all we are beyond the days of being messy petty and miserable okay that part <laughs> Well, listen, we are healing, glowing, and growing. It's yeah. 2021. That's I it. love it. I love it. So before I do let you go, I definitely want everyone to um, just know how they can contact you and all of your information um, to where they can support you. And uh, like I said, I know I've mentioned Amazon, but just how they can purchase yeah. and all those great things. Yeah, Amazon, anywhere ebooks are sold, you already, I mean, you gave so much information. So listen to her, please. She knows what she's <laughs> talking about. She's done her research. She's amazing. So, uh, and if anybody wants to follow me, I am on Instagram at Tasha Hunter LCSW. So there I share uh, kind of whatever is on my mind as it relates to trauma and healing, self-worth self-love, uh, body positivity, sexuality. I, I share all of that stuff as well as uh, information about my book. You're going to find it there. And I've got a podcast coming out March the 1st, which is called When We Speak. And so um, that's kind of the next evolution to help people get free, uh, have people come on and they're going to be sharing their stories, their experiences and how they got free from their own situations. And so when we speak, we'll be out March the 1st and it's available everywhere where podcasts are available, Google, Spotify, iTunes, all of that. 
I love it. Again, this is true revolutionary work. I am so honored to even just share this space with you. I cannot wait to get the book and to listen to the podcast because I'm yeah. all about supporting Black narratives and authentic Black voices. We need yeah. to amplify them more. We need to hear our stories be told. So I am super excited. I will definitely be told yeah. in. I'll, I'll be Thank right Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but um, like we've been saying this entire interview, uh, self-healing, mental health, all of that yeah. is a journey. What mm-hmm. is some... I hate to say like an inspirational quote, but yeah. you so girl, you so you so deeper than that. <laughs> but what is um, some inspirational words or encouraging words that you can say for someone who is, you know, kind of in a dark place right now? You know, mm-hmm. to be honest, twenty twenty was difficult for us all. This yeah. this pandemic is still out here. It's been a lot going on. Um, kind of being forced into isolation has forced us all to really have self-introspection whether we wanted to do it or not you got to sit with yourself a lot because you can't use those uh usual outlets of oh I'll just go to the club or I'll just do whatever it's like we're kind of being forced to sit and and think about the decisions we made the life we built Mm -hmm. for ourselves so what's some inspiration that you can give someone who's kind of in a dark space right now and um and to 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 do better and and feel better first of all buy the book but after that (laughs) but but also if 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 you're listening and in 2020 was hell okay it was hell for me and it was hell for a lot of people and and you're right having to sit through all of that not just the pandemic and everything that was lost in that, but just life stuff that happened in the midst of that. Yeah. So my inspiration for you today is very simple. Call your therapist. It's been a while, okay? And if you've not been to therapy before, you can go to Therapy for Black Girls. That would be my first recommendation. Therapy Dan, uh, Clinicians of Color has a di- directory. And lastly, if you need psychology today but but go to therapy therapy for black girls uh first and find somebody that specializes in what you're going through don't just choose anybody uh find somebody that specializes in what you're going through if you need help with that contact me on instagram and say hey this is what i got going on how do i find somebody what do i do i can help you with that i don't have a problem with doing that um and normalize what you're feeling, call it out, name, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm angry. I'm disgusted. I feel lonely. Mm -hmm. I feel worn out. Name that thing. You got to get it out. So, I mean, I feel like I could talk for 30 minutes, so I'm not going to do that, (laughs) but, but normalize your emotions. If you want her to talk for 30 minutes, you can book her. (laughs) You can buy her book. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah you, you you don't have to be the strong one anymore you don't have to know it all so um talk to somebody and just you know have that safe place where you can be heard and that person can sit with you in whatever emotion you're feeling you don't have to do it alone I love that um I think there's so much power in that because Um, You kind of mentioned it earlier, like I, the way I kind of protect myself is I come super overproductive. It's Mm -hmm. like, oh, you know what? I'm lonely. I'm having a lot of depression. Oh, I'm about to create all this content. Mm -hmm. I'm about to make a million shirts. And I kind of, that, that's my kind of um, protection space. Mm -hmm. And, And therapy helped me realize that it's like, you, you can't, you can't work away this depression. You can't, um, you can't yeah. party away this depression. You can't, mm-hmm. you know, drink away this depression. Like, it's like, you have to do the work. And yeah. um, I'm so glad that you mentioned naming it because there mm-hmm. was a place, there was a time in my life where I didn't do that at all. Yeah, I was lashing out and I was, you know, again, turning to all these other yeah. things that were temporary um, solutions. Very Me too. temporary. <laughs> It's like, well, of course I'm not thinking about how depressed and lonely I am yeah. because I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <gonna> be honest. <laughs> Listen, they, they know how I am on this podcast. We are all about yeah. raising our freedom. I love it. To get our freedom. Yeah. You have to name it. 
to heal from it. And that's what I was doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like even with yeah. going through grief of losing my father, it's like, yeah. I didn't take the time to actually feel those emotions. I tried mm-hmm. to suppress them. And well, yeah. Hurt. And often like, <laughs> for, for strong women, mm-hmm. we do that as well because we worry so much about, well, I can't really talk about it with this person because I don't want them sad. I don't want them worried about me. So we can't even take time to worry about ourselves because we're worried about how, well, if I say how I feel, then I'm going to impact this other person. Right. We're always having to be the strong one. That's because of white supremacy, but we'll talk about that a different That is very true. true. (laughs) But you know what, if you want to hear some more about this, you know what you can do? You can go to Amazon right now and you can buy What Children Remember (laughs) by the Tasha Hunter LCSW. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much but look the last thing before I let you go I all, as you can see I love my music yeah. <laughs> I'm a lover of music I'm a lover of all things black of course um mm-hmm. I have to act and I always like to kind of stump people with this what is mm-hmm. your go-to song movie mantra because I know mm-hmm. working in your profession I know you probably mm-hmm. have those days where you are like physically and mentally exhausted mm-hmm. so when you're having those moments where where you as the professional are low what do you turn to um besides your therapist what do you do kind of to uplift yourself what's your favorite song movie quote I, my, my 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 catalog for music is is too deep to pick one but it's <laughs> it, it it depends on the moment sometimes it's a little bit of gospel some fred hammond some clark sisters yeah. and other times it's outcast. It, it, you know, it, 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 it might be a little bit of John Legend. It might be some Brittany Howard or some, um, some her or yeah. Ari Lennox. I'm all over the place. So you just, you never know if you're going to get a gospel song or something a little bit ratchet or something a little bit smooth. <laughs> it just depends. I love yeah. it. I love that duality. I love it. It's all of, we listen, we as black women, we are all of those things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might get yeah. a little clock sisters. You might get a little Cardi B. You never That's know. It. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. One after the other too. <laughs> right. Like literally what right there. <laughs> yeah. That's listen, it. For every mountain and then we're going to play WAP. But God, yeah. I just <laughs> me. <laughs> I am here for it. Tasha, this has been yeah. such a blessing and mm-hmm. an honor to have you here. Mm-hmm. Just for the last time, for the people who missed it the first time, yeah. let everyone know where they can follow you and support you. Because I yeah. definitely want them to um, just continue supporting everything that you're doing. You are a beautiful soul, a remarkable, a, a remarkable professional. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you. And to just be in your presence, um, I, I can feel it just across the screen. Yeah. So I know you are are oh, truly helping your clients. And that's- Thank you. you. Uh, if anybody wants to follow me or reach out or anything, I'm on Instagram. I kind of live there. So Tasha Hunter, LCSW, uh, you can find me there. Thank you so much for everything. This has been I awesome. Love <laughs> I love it. Make sure again that you guys purchase her memoir, What Children Remember. It is all about- uh, speaking it, like she said, mm-hmm. naming it trauma yeah. and, and not just that, but showing the journey of how to overcome. That's and um, one thing that I definitely love that you do have listed on your site is the past does not dictate your future. So this is your time to grab hold of your life and mm-hmm. make it what you want it to be, be who you want to be, be the best version of yourself. And that mm-hmm. best version involves you healing from the things that limited you from getting there in the first place. And the way to do that, to start off, if you're like, I don't have a therapist yet, I don't know what to do, da, 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 grab <laughs> what children remember. No, hold it up again, cuz, and let them see that beautiful cover. I love this cover, by the way. <laughs> let them see it again. It's, it's available right now on yeah. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And make sure you also check yeah. out Tasha's podcast, Dropping March the first March 1st so that's yeah pay pay your rent and listen to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) that's it when we speak will be out March the 1st thank you so much yes thank you guys so much for tuning in this has been another episode of the official conscious kingdom podcast this is freedom where we are raising our frequency to reach our freedom and get our liberation it's all about being free and you cannot be free from what you you can't heal what you don't reveal So like Tasha told us, speak it, 
put a name on it and do the work. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and make sure that you follow Tasha as well as follow at Conscious Kingdom and our official podcast page at Freedom Podcast. Make sure y'all come back around Grandma and them house next week because we're going to have another dope cousin that's going to help us get our lives. Can y'all see the theme we're doing for 2021? We really is trying to get it together, y'all, and we can do it. You just have to do the work. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Peace.